We're joined once again today by Dr. Lawrence Krauss. He is a theoretical physicist, cosmologist, professor of physics, and director of the Origins Project at Arizona State University. Pleasure as always to have you on. I want to start today with something you've written quite a bit about, which is this idea of uh, causation and the origins of the universe. And there's an argument that we've heard made uh, certainly by William Lane Craig, the Christian apologist, but also by others when it comes and, to and a cause. I'm sorry. sorry. No, go, go ahead. On. I was going to say Christian apologist and famous scientist. No, go on. Anyway. And famous scientist. Exactly. Which basically the argument is as follows, right? All things that exist have a cause. The universe exists. Therefore, the universe has a cause for its existence, which William Lane Craig and some others say has to be God. Can you give us a kind of simple explanation, if there is such a thing, for why that logical reasoning is not logical to you? Well, syllogisms are only logical with, if you make if the assumptions um, behind them are are are, are correct and and uh, and and not extrapolated beyond their 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 domain of validity. What do you mean by cause? And 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 say you you observe that all things you see have a cause. It's not so clear when you come to quantum mechanics that that's true in the in the real world. First of all, secondly, even if it were true. And the universe had a cause that does not imply any divine cause. It's um, I, I, when I was countering him, I used the example that uh, you know, ten percent of all mammalian sp uh, species are uh, a gay. William Lane Craig is a mammal, therefore you know, and 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 uh, and the point is that you can't extrapolate beyond what you know. The universe has taught us that it is stranger than we can imagine, and it could be. It could be for that, that the universe has no cause in the sense that at the beginning of time, at the beginning of space, when the, when the Big Bang happened and when, when, when uh, our universe presumably popped into existence, space popped into existence, but space and time are tied together by general relativity and therefore time popped into existence. It's quite possible that time itself as a quantity did not exist before the Big Bang. If that's true, then the whole notion of cause and effect has to be looked at more carefully, doesn't it? Because cause assumes that there was a time before. Um, so we, that may not be the case, I should say. We don't know because we don't have a quantum theory of gravity. But it's not clear that our classical notions of what are sensible in the real world apply. In fact, it's quite clear that, what, that our classical notions of what are sensible in the real world don't apply everywhere. As I've often said, an electron can be in two places at one time. That appears to be logically impossible, but it's only logically impossible because we rely on classical reasoning. We can't rely on classical logical reasoning to, uh, to address the world. We have to ask the question, how does the world behave, rather than saying, you know what, world, you don't seem logical, so stop behaving that way. Uh, it, we just have to force our beliefs to conform to the evidence of reality. Um, and you know, when an electron, when, a, when, a, when an atom emits uh, a photon of light. It happens spontaneously in quantum mechanics. There, now, we know that, that, that there are laws of physics that tell us that there's some probability that, that should happen, but there's no immediate cause of that atom emitting that light, that specific event in quantum mechanics. We can't, we can't treat quantum systems that way. Isn't, so that, there, isn't there also kind of an implied definition when the term cause is used by some of these folks that cause also means that there is some meaning and goal to everything that exists when well, when cause does not necessarily mean that well exactly cause i mean the assumption is cause means purpose but uh, cause only means purpose when it when 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 there's a purpose and in general there there doesn't have to be so as i said before even if there was a cause to our universe even if there was a precursor to our universe before it existed that cause can be purely physical and in fact one of the beauties of science is we make the assumption that physical effects have physical causes. And that works. That's gotten us from the Middle Ages to the modern world of bendable iPhones. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, um, uh, and so uh, this assumption that, I mean, that's the other, I mean, it's just amazing. The logical leaps of, of illogic that, that William Clay jumps to. Uh, when, when you assume, okay, that syllogism says, okay, there is a cause, and then he says, and that cause must be God. It's like, 
oh, well, hold on a second, you know, and then a miracle occurred. Well, that That's falls kind of into the God of the gaps uh, uh, fallacy, right? Which is anything we can identify that we can't explain must have been God. Well, well, it's like UFO people who say anything they can't explain is a UFO. Uh, we want to believe. The point is, we are hardwired to want to believe in UFOs and gods and that sort of thing. But we, but there's no reason to jump to that conclusion when there's something you don't understand to say it's God. And uh, and 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 and, and you're, it's it's sort of a God of the gaps argument. In this case, it's just a completely unwarranted jump. Um, you know, you could say, you know, there was a cause and the cause was the multiverse, but he wouldn't like that. Uh, uh, and and the point and then not only that, there's an incredible leap to say, OK, the cause was some God, some divine intelligence, which, by the way, is not required as far as we can tell. But even if you assume there's some purpose to the universe, it's a huge leap to decide that that purpose to the universe is their Christian God and not someone else's God, not one of the thousand gods that have existed in, in you know, throughout human history. It's just an amazing set of assumptions built on assumptions built on assumptions, all of which fall apart when you look at the details. Well, this really kind of ties in this issue of causality ties in with the issue of evidence and proof. And I got a really interesting question from a viewer of ours named Andrew Stroud for you. And he says, you know, the scientist Victor Stenger in his book, God, the failed hypothesis asserts that science can prove that God does not exist. And Christopher Hitchens, if I recall correctly, always maintained that science, at least in its current form, cannot prove or disprove the existence of God. Where do you fall on this? Well, it's a floppy. I fall on it and the fall on the side of science. Science cannot disprove propositions that are unfalsifiable, that are vague, that cannot be tested. And God, you know, you can make God whatever. Look, I cannot disprove the proposition that you and I were created a millisecond ago. Okay, I can't disprove that, that all of our memories of what happened before that weren't created by God to fool us into thinking we actually existed before. I mean, how can you prove that kind of ridiculous proposition? And so, uh, or disprove that kind of ridiculous proposition. So God is defined in some sense to be untestable. All we can say is there's no evidence for God. As, as Bertrand Russell argued a long time ago, I can't disprove the notion at the present time that there isn't a China teapot orbiting Jupiter. All I can ask is based on everything I know, is it likely? And of course, it's, there's no, it's extremely unlikely, so unlikely that we'd say it probably isn't true. And that's the way it is in science. We, we, we ask about degrees of likeliness, likelihood and unlikelihood, and everything we know about the universe shows no evidence for purpose or design. Does that prove there's no purpose or design? Absolutely not. It just makes it extremely unlikely. Do you maintain that at no point will we'll be able to kind of concoct a proof of lack of existence? Do you maintain that it's simply not within the realm of science to even uh, work in that area? Well, I, it's, you know, science, I mean, it's not, first of all, it's not productive. We just try and figure out how the universe works and we're doing a pretty good job. We're not interested in determining how the universe doesn't work, I suppose. But more importantly, no, I mean, look, God is designed to be, to be unphysical and untestable. And, um, you know, every experiment you can imagine you could do that disprove God, have people pray and have nothing happens. Well, how do you prove that that God isn't listening or wasn't watching a football game that, that I mean, you, you try and think of a, of a test, okay? Uh, um, uh, uh, it's like saying we, we can't disprove that unicorns exist if, if those unicorns disappear immediately upon anyone looking at them. <laughs> okay, it's the same thing. Hey, uh, last thing I want to touch on. I recently saw The Unbelievers in its entirety. I greatly enjoyed it, recommended it to the audience. What has been the most unusual or surprising or interesting bit of feedback you've gotten to the film? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know that it's unusual. I've been, I guess I've been gratified that a number of people have said it's it's dramatically affected their thinking and and, and eased their mind they thought they were alone hmm. it, i guess the emails i get a lot lately are people who feel that they're alone or feel they're bad for thinking for themselves and i think it's really gratifying that that this film can have that impact i mean i think the other thing that surprised us right off was that we heard from a lot of religious people who when we polled people saying that they recommended the movie to their friends, which was a surprise. And then I guess it's not a surprise, but perhaps the most amusing 
uh, tweet I got with the other day, which I retweeted, I think, was, was someone who said, I know I'm going to hate this film and everything in it, and therefore I've rightly and justly given it a zero and no plan to watch it. <laughs> which is perfect. I mean, it's a perfect example of... Uh, of uh, belief without without uh, observation. I yeah, think. it's a it's a it's a microcosm of what the film is about, essentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've been speaking with Lawrence Krauss. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks again. You take care.